Hello, welcome back to my study and to Dongit's model railway. Recently I experienced a problem when running on the club layout. A train was failing to stop reliably in ABC sections. By trial and error we tracked it down to running multiple lit Pullman coaches in the train. Any one coach was okay, but more than one would cause intermittent issues. I've got the scope out today to get a closer look at what's going on and why coaches like these Pullmans are interfering with the operation of ABC. DCC is a square wave. The digital data is encoded in the length of the squares, short or long. ABC inserts a number of diodes into the track feed. This reduces the height of the squares by differing amounts top and bottom, and the offset in one or other direction is what is detected by the decoder as the ABC signal. I covered the ABC circuit and making custom ABC PCBs with my sponsor PCBWay in an earlier video. There's a link to that here if you are interested in what went into making these. If you are working on an electronics project and are in need of some inspiration, advice, or to have some questions answered, PCBWay have a community section on their website for exactly this purpose. There are many projects posted by other PCBWay customers in the community section already, which might prove inspirational. There isn't a model railway specific section, but a quick search in the DIY electronics section for railroad or DCC shows a lot of model railway projects being undertaken already. If you have a specific question, there is also a Q&A section where you could ask your question and get advice from a range of helpful people. Square wave signals like DCC are inherently noisy and frequently exhibit problems with keeping a constant level voltage in the flat areas. The instant swap from positive to negative voltage requires a very high frequency response to achieve, and when a transmission line fails to preserve the full frequency range, you get a slower ramp and some ringing or ripple at the top and bottom of the waveform. Model railways are also far from ideal transmission lines. A rat's nest of individual wires not run as pairs behind the scenes isn't a good start, and track made of two neatly parallel conductors that look an awful lot like an antenna from a data transmission perspective makes for an electrically very noisy environment. As a result, the DCC signal will always exhibit some level of noise, which is exactly what you can see here on the scope. This is the loco that was hauling the train I had a problem with at the club. It ran fine by itself, so let's run it into the braking section and see what the waveform looks like to see what a working ABC waveform looks like. You can see there is a small amount taken from the top and a larger amount taken from the bottom of the waveform. I have the positive probe on the right rail, so this is the right rail more positive case. The convention is which way the waveform is shifted, up or down, controls which direction of travel the ABC signal applies to. Let's introduce one of the lit Pullmans and see how that changes things. We can start to see the development of a potential problem here. The first part of the negative phase of the DCC signal is developing an initial higher voltage part, then dropping to the intended level shortly afterwards. Let's put the second Pullman in the train now. With the second Pullman, there is a much clearer and more obvious step in the waveform. I have a third Pullman by a different manufacturer but with similar lighting. Let's try that too. That doesn't seem to have made much of a difference. I guess the lighting is done differently in this one, and it doesn't suffer from the same issue. Measuring the peak to peak on the initial part of the waveform no longer shows a significant positive offset, so should the waveform be measured by the decoder in this section, it may not be detected as a braking signal. In this case, the loco is still stopping correctly, so the decoder must be measuring later than this point. If I temporarily lift the second pullman off the track, you can see the point at which the waveform changes move about. Off back on again. The coach is warm to the touch at one end, which indicates it has a fairly high power draw. Let's take this coach apart and see what's inside. I suspect the circuit in the coach is very simple, probably a basic bridge rectifier and a capacitor driving the lights. 
In the lower part of the DCC waveform, the coach initially is not drawing any power, instead running primarily from the capacitor. I suspect the step in voltage within the negative part of the waveform is as a result of the ABC waveform having a lower voltage in one direction, and the way the lighting is driven from the capacitor means there is initially a lot less load in the negative side of the waveform, but this picks up as the capacitor voltage drops slightly. It is worth noting that the train is stopping reliably at home with every one of my Pullman coaches in the train. Despite me testing as far away from the booster as I can, the club layout is much larger still, requiring a lot more bus wire. It is also a modular layout, so it has board jumpers in it. This will add another problem, with more potential sources of voltage drop between the booster and the train. The wires between the bogey and the circuit boards are really short on this, so it's a bit difficult to see. But sure enough, four diodes making a bridge rectifier and an electrolytic capacitor are visible. And there's a black lump where the light source is taped to a bundle of optical fibres heading up to the tables. Given the heat impact at this end of the coach, it might be a grain of wheat bulb underneath there. I'll need to think about what to do with these coaches. The body shell being warm to the touch is not good. Perhaps they need a lighting tech upgrade to match modern expectations. I could replace the light source with an LED and change the charging part of the circuit to have an inrush current protection. On the other hand, given where my layout is set and the fact that these coaches were not common in that area, Perhaps a better approach is to do a more significant conversion with some spare Mark I shells I have surplus from another project. Let me know in the comments whether you would look to fix the lighting or whether the conversion using spare SEP shells is more interesting. See you next time up here in my study at Donget's Model Railway.